most blessed trinity is the central mystery of our faith. Also remember, God's an infinite spirit. So any picture we make of the most blessed trinity is automatically wrong. We can't help making pictures. That's what our imagination does. But don't be misled by the picture. Just remember it's wrong. Now all that is background. So let's get started. God's knowledge and his love are infinite. His knowledge and his love are infinite. And this raises two questions. Since God's knowledge is infinite, what is he thinking about? And since his love is infinite, whom does he love? What does God think about? And whom does he love? First, what does God think about? God has an idea. But he only has one idea. God has an idea, but he only has one idea. He already knows everything. He hasn't forgot anything. And he can't learn anything. He's God. He fits a job description. He has one idea. It can never change. It's an eternal, unchanging idea. Again, it's unchanging. He isn't going to learn anything, and he can not forget anything. And he's infinite. Infinite is just a word that means limitless. There's no limits. Since God is infinite, it means he's the infinite, only infinite being there is, or that can be. There cannot be two limitless beings. One would be a limit on the other. You can think about that later. Don't go down that trail right now. Let's stay with this. But that's important to contemplate, okay? Anyway, God is infinite. And he has an infinite intellect. Now, the only thing an infinite mind can find that's even worth thinking about is the infinite being. What does this mean? It means that the idea God has in his infinite mind is the idea he has about himself. And it can't change. His idea is as eternal as he is. He doesn't suddenly think of something. It never changes. This is why it's important to contemplate this stuff. Because it's so different in a sense than us. He's given us the power to think. But we don't have any experience of this. Because our ideas flow all the time. The more powerful an angel is, the less ideas it has. The more simple, the more comprehensive its ideas. The most powerful angels have a very simple idea that can comprehend very, very many things because they're closer to God spiritually in that way than we are. We keep learning. An angel knows it all just like that. Bang, it's poured in. So we can see this when we think a little bit about angels. When we're thinking about God, it's just incredible. His idea doesn't change. To us, it might seem at first place, well, that means he's kind of simple. It does mean that, but it doesn't mean it in the way we mean when we say somebody's simple. He's simple in the sense that there's no complication to him. He gets it all, all at once. Okay, so anyway, he has an idea that's as eternal as he is, and it doesn't suddenly think of it. And here's another extraordinary aspect of it. The idea that God has of himself is and must be absolutely perfect. Why? Because he knows everything, and that means that what's ever in God must also be in his idea. Whatever is in God must be in his idea of himself. Whatever is in God's idea of himself must be absolutely and exactly the same as it is in himself. Otherwise, he wouldn't have a clear idea of himself, which means he'd be ignorant of something, which is impossible, okay? So whatever is in God must be in his idea of himself, and it must be exactly the same in his idea as it is in himself, okay? That's really important. Might want to mull that over later, but whatever's in God must be in his idea of himself, and it must be exactly the same in his idea as it is in himself. Otherwise, God wouldn't know everything about himself, would he? And that's impossible. That's so much different than our kind of ideas, it's impossible for us to imagine. But don't worry about our imaginations. It's not impossible to understand. We can't comprehend it, but we can understand that. Now... It gets even more interesting. Any idea we might have is a thing. Our ideas are things. Our idea of weaponness is a thing. Our idea of justice is a thing. Our idea of truth is a thing. That's not true with God. 
Whatever is in God must be in his idea of himself. And since it must be exactly the same in his idea as it is in himself, that means that since God can know love, then his idea of himself must be able to know and love. Since God can know love, his idea must know and love. In other words, his idea is not a thing. Things can't know and love. Persons can know and love. His idea is a person. Now there's more. An idea isn't just off floating off in space somewhere. Ideas don't just drift off. We have an idea that doesn't just go drifting off and sit up on the shelf or something like that, okay? A thought is in the mind of the thinker. So this one idea of God has to be in the same identical nature as the thinker. It has to be, okay? So God's idea of himself is a person, but it's also in the same nature. God conceives within his own infinite nature a perfect, infinite idea, which because it is an idea, is completely within his nature, and because it's a perfect idea of himself, completely contains his nature. His idea, God's idea of himself, is eternal. It's unchanging. He has an internal, unchanging idea. His idea is the eternal, unchanging word. The thinker is the first person of the Most Holy Trinity, the Father. And the idea of the word is the second person of the Most Holy Trinity, the Son. So what does God think about? He thinks about himself. All right, so God thinks about himself, but whom does he love? Well, we have a beautiful idea. We can admire it. We can dwell on it. We can even love it. What a great idea. You know, we can fall in love with our great ideas. How often we do those kind of things. How about still, at the end of the day, it's only an idea. It's a thing. We can love it, but our idea can't return that love, can it? No way. But as we've seen, God's idea of himself, this eternal word, is not some thing, but it's some one. His idea is a person, the second person of the most blessed trinity. Just as God is absolutely and totally and infinitely perfect and worthy of all love, so his idea is absolutely and totally perfect and infinitely worthy of all love. And so the thinker, which is the father, and the word the son, love each other with a perfect and infinite love. Each person pours himself out totally towards the other, holding nothing back. And this love that the Father have for one another is eternal, unchanging, infinite, has every perfection they do. It's a person. It's someone, the third person in the Most Holy Trinity. And of course, the love the Father and the Son have for one another totally fill their whole nature, producing a third person from all eternity. But again, this person is within the same divine nature. So the second person, the Word, the Son, proceeds from the Father and is generated by way of the intellect. The third person, the Holy Ghost, proceeds from the Father and the Son by way of the will. One divine nature, expressed totally as thinker, expressed totally as word, expressed totally as love. Three divine persons, one divine nature. What are you? Question about nature, God. Who are you? Question about person, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Three distinct persons, but not three separate persons. They're three distinct persons, but they're not three separate persons. These three divine persons do not share the divine nature. They don't share the divine nature. Each one possesses it totally. The Father possesses it totally. The Son possesses it totally. The Holy Ghost possesses it totally. Okay? Let's review. Since God is infinite spirit, any picture that we make, and we can't help making them, any picture we make of the most blessed trinity is wrong. We can't help making mental pictures. That's what our imaginations do. But we don't want to be misled by the picture. We just want to remember it's wrong and think about it in spite of the picture, just like we learn to do with geometric points. A mystery is an inexhaustible truth we can never completely understand, but we can keep drawing more and more out of as we contemplate it. Huh? We can see more and more deeper insights. Nature tells us what is it, what can it do. person tells us who is it, who's actually doing it. Now, with respect to the Trinity, God's idea of himself, the eternal word, is a person. And just as God is absolutely and infinitely perfect and worthy of all love, so also his idea is absolutely and infinitely perfect and worthy of all love. And so the Father, the thinker, and his idea of the word, the Son, 
love one another with a perfect and infinite love. Each person pours himself out totally towards the other, holding nothing back. And this love that the Father and the Holy Ghost or the Son have for each other is eternal, unchanging, infinite person, the Holy Ghost, the third person, the most blessed Trinity. The second person, the Word, the Son, proceeds from the Father and is generated by way of the intellect. And the third person, the Holy Ghost, proceeds from the Father and Son by way of the will. God's three distinct persons, but He's not three separate persons. And these three divine persons do not share the divine nature. Each person possesses it totally. The Father possesses it totally. The Son possesses it totally. The Holy Ghost possesses it totally. Three things you can do today. One, pray for light to come to a deeper understanding. Not a better image, a deeper understanding of this mystery. Second, ponder the words in the Nicene Creed, which we're about to sing. Third, ponder the words in the preface of today's Mass. Let's close with a passage from the Fourth Lateran Council, 1215. Quote, We firmly believe and simply confess that there is only one true God, eternal and immeasurable, almighty, unchangeable, incomprehensible and ineffable, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, but one absolutely simple essence, substance, or nature. The Father is from none, the Son from the Father alone, and the Holy Spirit from both, equally, eternally, without beginning or end, the Father generating, the Son being born, and the Holy Spirit proceeding, consubstantial and co-equal, co-omnipotent and co-eternal. Close quote. And keep in mind that we're in the state of grace. The most blessed Trinity is dwelling in the depths of our souls with this procession, this eternal procession going on in the depths of our souls, and He's dwelling within us as a friend.